So I'm Beatrice Pelloni, I am the head of the School of Mathematical and Computer Sciences at Harriet Watt. I've only been in this role for about six months now. Before that I was uh, head of department of mathematics at, at another university and uh, also the director of a center for doctoral training for a while. I always liked mathematics uh, from the end of high school onwards and so I, I went into mathematics as my undergraduate and then I had the opportunity, which was quite rare, I'm Italian, I did my undergraduate in Italy and um, it wasn't so common to go on for a PhD, especially abroad, but I have a very, I had a very good uh, teacher while I was at university that really encouraged me. He had been to do a PhD in the States, so he said, oh, you should go, it's a wonderful experience. I said, okay, I'll go. I, it was my first opportunity to get away from home and my usual, you know, my comfort zone. So I went to Yale to do my PhD. Uh, it was a very, very interesting time uh, in terms of the science that certainly motivated me to keep going. I, I love the science. I loved meeting a lot of international students there. It was a tremendously inspiring and uh, supportive environment from the student point of view. Uh, also for me it was wonderful diversity of backgrounds, educational and cultural uh, experiences. We were only two girls in the whole of the mathematics PhD class at Yale, both in my year. It wasn't, that was a little bit uh, strange for me because in Italy there are many many women that study mathematics. That was a revelation to me that it wasn't the same elsewhere. Eh? And then I, I also married while I was a PhD student and, and had three children, so luckily the American system is flexible and it allowed me to take time in and out of it and I, it took me a very long time to finish my PhD and I must say during it there were many moments when I thought mm, I will never finish, I will not continue this and I doubted if I would ever continue being a mathematician but eventually with the support of not so much my supervisor there, because I, I changed supervisor, the first one I had, once I had my first child, sort of really backed off and said, oh well, it's either science or, or children, basically. Not so many words, but that's what, what he said. But I, I found other people that were very supportive and I finished. And then after that, a bit circumstances, luck, I think you always need to be, to have some luck on your side at crucial points in your life, I, I want to postdoctoral fellowship to come to the UK and I've done the rest of my professional life in the UK. I went into academia, had lectureship, readership. Eventually I became head of department and professor and I've moved here now. So my role here now is quite different because I don't have as much time for science research and teaching as I had before. As head of school I have a lot more uh, work to do with administration and, and uh, leading the department and the school and talking to, to the people in my school it takes a lot of time but I find that very rewarding. I have never felt myself uh, that my job was uh, something I was breaking a mold about that it was a man's job I had taken and I've never felt any different. I know that mm. I have brought my own personality and my own take on the job I did and that probably in many ways was, uh, if you want to follow the stereotype, it was quite different from what other people would have done and I guess I was the first head of department of my department before who was a woman. So I perhaps have more uh, of an empathic way of going about it, but uh, no, I never felt that this was a problem. I, I had a lot of satisfaction from the feedback I got on how I entered that kind of leadership role. I've always felt uh, that I was treating and dealing with colleagues at my level and there was never a sense of hierarchy. It just doesn't come natural to me. And, uh, but I think was quite successful in, in that place here. I don't know, it's too early to say, but it's a good challenge and I for me the challenge is also to not to to keep going with with my intellectual interest and my research so far it has been quite difficult but uh, leading the my colleagues 
coming from inside the discipline is, I think, very, very crucial. I, I did accept to take on this role because I think that if you are a scientist dealing with the, the issues that confront fellow scientists, you have a better chance to understand what may be the things that are important and the ones that are not and fight for them. In some sense I have encountered it to some uh, people early on, like my first supervisor have certainly not been very supportive of my clear choice that I, I wanted both a family life and a career. And I've always kept that in the, in the foreground of anything I've done. And uh, you know, at times it does require you to make difficult choices. Do I go to a conference or do I stay home because there's nobody here? And for me, there's never been an issue. I might have said, oh, I'm missing a good conference. But the, fa you know, the family aspect and my commitment to the rest of, of my life has always been clear. And it has never posed a problem. Or maybe if it has, I've always chosen to ignore that other people perceive that was strange. So I've never really personally felt the fact that I've gone on feeling that that was the right thing to do. So I have not, uh, I may have been lucky, there are not, uh, this is a good time for in bringing this to, to, the, to the profession of scientific research at least, because it's, there is a lot of uh, uh, new con consciousness of the fact that there are very few women in mathematics and STEM subjects in, in general and that they need to be supported and that it cannot be a choice between this and having other things in your life and that they have to be adjusted within the profession. So I was lucky in, in timing in that sense and I've always been supported and helped in this. So the issue of quotas is fraught with the differing views. I know that as a professor of mathematics, among few, few professors of mathematics in the UK, I am bombarded with requests to be on committees, to be on panels, to be on editorial boards, to be on things like that, because now they, there has to be a woman, otherwise it looks bad, and there are few women to go about. I don't think quotas is the answer, it cannot be that the few women have to do everything. I, there have been times, because I'm not, you know, I, I'm trying to be collaborative, I often say yes when I should say no, and there have been times when I've been just absolutely crushed by the sheer amount of preparation for the next meeting that I, that I had to do, and I've started saying, backing off from, from few things, but it's not unusual, I know from colleagues that the same thing happens over here. What, what should be is that no matter what the configuration of a, of a given committee is, it will operate on, you know, in a fair way and valuing the diversity and giving equality of opportunities to whatever they are considering. Not that there have to be women necessarily on each committee. So that I think is my view on that and I, I really just talk to all my colleagues in this, in this way. You do stand out sometimes whether that's a good thing or if you know you stand out maybe for the wrong reasons so no, I, I honestly see f few redeeming features <laughs> to gender stereotyping. So there are, uh, <coughs> within Max, different groups and uh, their balance is different. Undergraduate in mathematics, I think, are quite balanced. In computer science, it's a total disaster. And I think in year two at the moment, there's only one girl out of the whole class and it's, you know, we're really making a lot of efforts to improve that. There is only so much that one can do in isolation. This is a much broader and cultural issue. Of course, as you go up the ladder, so if you go to postgraduate or, or, or academic staff, the percentage drops even in mathematics, but it's, it's improving. Harriet Watt as a place to work has felt so far really very positive because it values diversity. And I think it, it's evident, and uh, in, in my school in particular there is really quite great diversity of backgrounds, of uh, ethnic provenance, of gender, of nationality. So gender is only one of, of the possible things here. Of course gender is, splits 
the population almost 50-50, so it's the most relevant in a sense. But I, I think there is a good culture here. So formally they have improved a lot and uh, much credit has to go to this to the Athena Swan initiative, at least for sciences and STEM subjects, uh, which has really gone into uh, institutions and uh, requested that a big data collection and analysis on, on issues of balance, of, of equality, of opportunity and fairness, diversity was undertaken. In Initially, in many places, this was really a paper exercise and a tick box thing, and it didn't change perceptions which are very entrenched. But it's, you know, this, there is a time lag to these things, but that's, you have to start somewhere. So I think it has had an effect. Uh, at least formally, people think twice before they say anything slightly that, that might be per construed as either sexist or in, a, in any other way. Um, divisive or contentious on the on issues of equality so yes things have improved in science dramatically i should say that it is not the reality everywhere in the world that uh, there is this tremendous divide in the science between you know genders elsewhere is quite more a lot more balanced well uh, we have to just first go into schools when you know start much much earlier than at, at university level to present the possibility of studying science or engineering or medicine or computer science to to all school children as an exciting open possibility for all and uh, it certainly sometimes feels like an uphill struggle. Uh, there are certain stereotypes that get rooted quite early, but we can only try.